I don't know if you can see that. It's uh, Alvin Lee in 10 years after. I'd love to change the world. Okay, my famous hat here is you know see me. And I'm wearing uh, Eagles. Eagle, but I might be seeing the Eagles at karaoke tonight. And I might try that song. Um, I'd love to change the world. And I might try some um, Dear Prudence. Okay, so what do we want to do? You know, see me. What does it mean? Um, remote viewing. Have you heard of remote viewing? Um, Major Ed Dames teaches a course. I think through the internet. Uh, there's a guy named Riordan that we like to follow from time to time. He does it. Um, I don't know. You might be able to go to the Monroe Institute and see if they will teach you remote viewing. Um, but anyway, go look up remote viewing and then you can see you won't see me, but I'll be looking at you. Uh, and I think it, uh, it just works. Okay. This LV is Las Vegas. Lost wages. That's what happens apparently when you go to the casinos there. Okay, uh, the next one I'm going to talk to you about is a book that uh, actually is way upstairs. It's called Synchro Destiny by Deepak Chopra. I have another Deepak Chopra book down here in this area. This one is called The Return of Merlin. And... Uh, about King Arthur or something. But the Synchro Destiny is the one I want to talk to you about because it's more personal to you. And in the book, Deepak basically wants you to use not your imagination, but the non-local power of the universe. Non-local mean this is local, right? Right around here, you know, my room here. This is the local area. Non-local means everywhere. The non-local power of the universe to do something for you. What exactly? Um, give you a destiny, a date with destiny. And what kind of date with, with destiny would you like to have? for yourself well it should be service to others and it should be happy fun joyful and uh, the idea is somehow you are here and you uh, have unique gifts that you can give to others because we are all individuals and we've all had individual life stories and Someone wants to say, well, some of us don't have really unique life stories. I mean, someone is trying to slam mothers. It's like, well, if you're a mother, you've had to go through bringing up baby. And it's the same for every mother or something. Um, uh, Bob Frizzell would say, uh, you go away, go away, go away. You don't get the point. The point is that everyone here, whether they're a mother or not, has a unique set of circumstances in their life. And you can't let anyone do what's known as gaslighting to you. Gaslighting is going to someone and saying, uh, are you okay? Are you okay? Have you seen a psychiatrist? There's something wrong with your memory. There's something wrong with your thought processes. Uh, your reality is, um, you, you're not in my reality. Well, that's a gaslighter, and you basically need to tell gaslighter, hey, take a hike. Get the hell away from me. You know, uh, you're basically insulting me. You're insulting my experience as a human being, and um, it's wrong. So you need to know about gaslighting because this uh, place is full of 3D people 
who uh, don't want to open their eyes to a greater reality. Um, they, if they don't want to, they don't want to, and you know. But when they start saying that, you know, they start disputing what your real experiences are and start telling you that never happened when it did, um, they're considered a toxic person and you, uh, you have to tread carefully with them. In other words, do you really need them in your life? Um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, what else do we want to talk about? I'm going to give you a quote from... The Wheel of Time by Carlos Castaneda. And the quote is, For an average man, the world is weird because if he's not bored with it, he's at odds with it. For a warrior, the world is weird because it is stupendous, awesome, mysterious, unfathomable. A warrior must assume responsibility for being here in this marvelous world, in this marvelous time. So it's supposed to be inspirational. So getting back to synchrodestiny, uh, synchronicity is, is what you want this non-local power of the universe to do for you, to bring you coincidences that make you go, oh, make you want to continue to pursue your quest towards all the things that I mentioned earlier. And is it going to work? If you're a human being, it will work. Will it work quickly? This is what I always say, because I do get synchronicities and coincidences, but quite often I say this is going way too slowly for me. Why is that? Because the person who's talking to you is a mental mind. Mental mind. The voice you hear is the mental body of me. And the journey is not about the mental mind, me. The journey is about this physical um, body. So... Uh, the mental mind wants to go and get with it, get going with it. And it's very easy for a mental mind to picture itself. Oh, I picture myself at the Great Wall of China. I can picture myself at the Brandenburg, Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. And I can picture myself on the beach in Jamaica. And just instantaneously, you can picture yourself in these places. But this physical body can't go there that fast. So uh, the famous talk that I always like to refer to is uh, about the inner conflict and it's given by Matt Kahn and it's a brilliant piece. Everyone should listen to it probably once a six, every six months to remind you, the mental body, that it's not your journey. Matt Kahn said as a mental body, your job is to train yourself to be an angel for the physical body. What does an angel do? Um, if the body doesn't want anything from you, your job is to be quiet and to watch patiently and uh, be available for the body if it needs information from the mental body. Or maybe you're going to be talking to other people through the body um, but primarily your job is to let the body have its life. No one believes that. Well, this Matt Kahn lecture, uh, will blow your mind. It will blow your mind because it's going to reset what you think you are. Well, what are you exactly? Most people think, well, I'm a mind-body combination thing. And it's my mind's job to tell the body what to do. If you listen to Matt Kahn's lecture, uh, you got it backwards. The body, uh, it's the body's journey to do what it wants to do. And where does it get its information from? If you go to the Hawaiian teachings, 
the lower self, the Hawaiians believe in maybe a three-part body, at least three parts, but the lower self is the physical body and it's directly in contact with the highest self. So, and what's the mental body? It's the middle self. So, the one that's talking to you right now is the middle self. And the middle self can't talk directly to the high self. It has to talk to the low self, the body. But if you let the body go and do what it needs to do, the body is in touch with the high self and the high self directs the body where to go. Isn't that unusual? Well, so there's two different places. Mat Khan's lecture, and he doesn't talk about anything Hawaiian. He gets it from his intuition, sounds like. is very, very, like you listen to him, it's incredible. But you can definitely look into the uh, high self, middle self, and low self uh, in Hawaiian, I don't know what you would call it, just uh, Hawaiian and put that into your search engine um, and see what else is available. There's all kinds of information you can get bogged down, but that's all I want you to know, that it is not your mind's journey. Your mind's job is actually to be quiet. So that's why you meditate and you watch the thoughts go by and then you go, hey, I'm a mind, I'm an awareness, and these thoughts that go by, they're not me. And sometimes you get a whole pile of thoughts that you don't even want. Uh, so you got to keep meditating and meditating so you get to the point where it gets much more quiet. And then if things do come through, you say, well, whatever this is, I can say, well, it's not me. And you can say, I like it or I don't like it. But instead of, you know, being someone who has never gone through this process, who thinks that every thought that ever comes in their head is them, them doing their thing and their brain created these thought forms, uh, that's, it makes you a very egoic person because a lot of the thoughts that come through your mind until you wake up uh, are all about egoic things. Ego is the sense of a separate self, you being separate from everything else. It's very right brain and um, uh, it is useful for doing tasks, you know, like if you're going to use a screwdriver to take something apart, your right brain is very good for doing those kind of things. But for the purposes of you as being an angel in training, uh, you're going to need to do a lot of training, which means you're going to have to be more receptive rather than you saying, I know it all. You have to let go of the idea that you are, uh, you are a know-it-all and you knew it all all along. And you know that's not true because your history as a human is you were a little tyke going to grade school, learning how to read and all things about Earth. So you know that when you came into this planet, you didn't know much. And even to this day, uh, what you do know is far less than everything there is to know. So you have to stay humble and uh, be kind to your body. Don't push your body into doing things that it's too tired to do or too sick to do or just doesn't want to do. But if you can do all that thing, then the high self will direct the body to do what the high self wants. And what the high self wants, well, The high self is inquiring institutional memory. What is an institutional memory? That is everything that you've learned so far in your life about all the things that are, you know, important on earth. And the point is, all the things that are important to, on earth that you've been taught came from ego-driven humans and not spirit, which is directly part of high self.